And it took me a while to catch on to that, but I got it now. So here are my pop-ups again. Um, not popping up, but what are you going to do? Uh, EA as a meta discipline. EA is the organizing meta context and standards authority, and we will talk about that governance there, standards authority for implementing all management and technology best practices. Um, so at the strategic level, we have these tools. At the business level, we have these tools. At the technology level, so an, e, an enterprise architecture is therefore the architecture of the enterprise and should cover all elements and aspects. Now, you know, EAs like this definition, but people that aren't enterprise architects think that EAs are trying to take over the world. <laughs> so there, this can be points of contention. And we will be able to discuss these. So core elements of an EA. So the, the framework is at the center. Uh, it produces uh, artifacts that adhere to the framework. Uh, there's a methodology for, for uh, um, enacting the framework, there are standards that are associated with the framework, best practices and all this, you know, has to fit in with the governance. <sighs> Again, this is a very traditional view of enterprise architecture. Uh, governance, methodology, you can read that. Uh, why is EA described as both the management program, uh, it supports, EA should support strategic decision-making, standardized policies, uh, oversight of resources. As an analysis and design method, there is the framework that is followed. There are EA components. There is the current architecture, the as-is architecture, and the future architecture, the to-be architecture. And if this seems murky and muddy at this point, that's okay. That is okay. Um, enterprise architecture activities, right. That's okay. And these slides are made available to you. And I cut and paste out of the book for some of that. You're not allowed to do that, but I can. So <laughs> uh, strategic alignment of resources and capabilities. Okay. So alignment, alignment, alignment. You see it here? You see it here. Uh, enterprise architecture, one of the big um, bennies, benefits of enterprise architecture is increased alignment. Strategic goals are at the top. They translate into enterprise-wide initiatives these are programs that get executed to support the strategic goals and they get spread across the lines of business and broken down into projects right so across the bottom axis is resource alignment the allocation of resources to align with the initiatives which align with the goals. The goals and the initiatives are to develop capabilities within the organization. Right? That's the vertical. Right? So we align the resources on the horizontal so that we get on the vertical within the lines of business, we get to develop capabilities. And those capabilities are to support the strategic goals. So the A word in this course is alignment. Right, so here we have the current architecture. We have a plan, a roadmap, a management plan to get from the current architecture to where we want to be the 2B architecture. And there are different components 
and different lines of business, these components are at this level, they go horizontal, and the lines of business are verticals. The framework, TOGAF, DODAF, FIAF, whatever it is, the framework identifies the scope of the architecture to be developed and establishes the relationships. It identifies interrelationships and sub-architectures, lines of business, right? and a plan for moving from the current to the future. So here we have, um, I already ran over this, artifacts, so yeah. We can have an architecture, an enterprise architecture for a line of business. We can have an enterprise architecture for multiple lines of business. We can have an EA for an entire organization. So the word enterprise, and there's probably a slide in here. Maybe not. I don't see it. The word enterprise mean can mean different things and people think oh enterprise it means the whole shebang not always it's just a word that is used and it can mean a piece a line of business a vertical uh it could it could mean the entire enterprise or something in between so yep here we have vertical components here we have cross-cutting components and We have threads. Threads are common activities that are present in all levels, like security and standards and skills. Right. Thanks, Ted. Right. Can different verticals manage their own EA? Sure. Different verticals could manage their own EA. You mean, can different, is it possible for a company to use multiple frameworks? What do you think? <clears throat> Hello? Anybody else? Really? Sure, it can differ by vertical. Um, different lines of business can use different EA frameworks. <clears throat> it is possible, but as Stephen says, but complicated. It's probably not ideal, uh, but of course it depends on the size of the organization. Right. It's common for orgs to use multiple frameworks coupled with a common EA. You have to customize a little. Right, you can, right. Right, all right. Fitting architecture elements together. How they are planning into, the, okay, the EA repository. So there's a management plan and the EA repository. Somebody tell me, what's the EA repository? Speak if you can. A living online document of EA artifacts. It's where all of your artifacts reside. Yes. Great. And how easy is an EA repository to use? <laughs> okay, Scott. It's painful. It's not easy. Right, so here you have all this effort put into creating artifacts, these artifacts that enterprise architects 
used to at least live and die by creating these models. And many artifacts are in the form of models. Um, and, and they would store them, they store them in what's called an EA repository. And it's online, it's electronic, it's digitized. And they, EAs would be like, well, nobody looks at the work we produce. And that can be true. In this world, we're talking about in book depends on design. It can be torturous, but if designed with usability in mind, it need not be. It need not be right. So I'm just speaking from in the beginning, back in the day, it was torturous. And for many organizations, there's it is still torturous. People can't find the artifacts other than the people that created the artifacts and people the business side of the house doesn't understand the artifacts because they weren't included it's better than nothing right I, i'm just giving some examples and these are topics that will come up and we will talk about uh, so there is a repository now how does an ear repository? right okay can EA be used by all types of enterprises? Sure. Who said sure? Charles? Charles, yeah. Do you agree with Charles? Unless it might be teeny tiny. But well, I, I, yeah. I, I have not said no to this question because I thought, I mean, at least the way we the book presents chapter one is, is based is primarily like IT. Base. So I think a, a, a non-IT um, business might not be able to, like maybe the business part of it, but then you, the specific strategic business and technology. So yeah, I was I, thinking that just conceptually, um, this is Charlie, uh, you know, a business should have desired capabilities, which can be mapped to how they're going to get there and what they're doing today. So that at a very high level is... An EA. And I think this is, should be by the business verticals and more from a you know, departmentalized version, depending on the size and the scale of the enterprise. And the business, right? Yeah, the, the hesitation I have with splitting this stuff by department or organization is that you're you're then prone to duplication, right? You're you're losing that. The holistic view or the cross enterprise efficiency, you know, which is one of the reasons why we like to do this. Correct. I, I partially agree to that statement. And the reason behind that, and I've seen that within my organization, if you try to roll out something at a bigger scale and try to bite the whole thing in one go, usually tends does not to fall through and every business might have a different need and within a business itself, you know, it could be a, a different handling. Some could be a productized version. Some could be a marketing version and some just could be uh, the back end corporate function. So the whole EA framework might not fit for every business, but yes, as a, as a function good to have to make sure the policies are aligned, but the components within the framework uh, has to be always by the, by the vertical. Right. Agreed. You have to make your, you have to decide between how, how wide you can go uh, and still deliver something useful. So, yeah. Great, great discussion. Okay, Marius, unless they use whiteboards, everybody is using a system or other and they could be sharing considerations between departments. Yes. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I love this introduction. Will this be an architected enterprise? Um, the essential question is, is an enterprise going to be structured based on an overarching agile design and set of standards? Or is it going to be an uncoordinated process programs and initiatives? So, you know, what do you want? 
Which one do you want? Just as back in the 80s when quality assurance was the thing, uh, and quality assurance was had to be baked into the way organizations did business, the way they manufactured their products. Uh, baking EA into the enterprise, you have to get the people. You have to get the buy-in. It takes technology, and it's not just technology. It's got to support the business, or else the, a lot of value that will be missed. And we will hear someone speak to us on um, the value proposition of EA. Without EA, leadership can't have a clear, consistent view of the enterprise on an ongoing basis. It won't be able to effectively compare. I just lost my screen. Where am I? I'm trying to find you. I'm, hold on. Ah, there I am. Okay, I'm back. Something timed out. Um, won't be able to compare business units. Decision making will be at the line of business. Uh, waste and duplication. Okay, so with EA, life is better with EA. <laughs> you create a culture of ongoing adaptation and optimization. It's a recipe for success. So, Scott, what is it that you agree with? Ah, funding. It is a recipe for success. I agree, too. Uh, funding. Let's talk about funding. It is a key yet too often un under-evaluated. It can be a spendy effort, but one with strong to nuclear. Nuclear? ROI. Right. Funding is important. So many customers just cannot understand that. Right. Organizations treat it as a liability. Hmm. What's unclear, Marius? Not unclear. Oh, unclear. Okay. Did I read it wrong? Ah, unclear. Okay. Not, but one with strong. Okay. Well, right. All right. Are we good? You good with that? So to wrap up, go ahead. Um, question. In your opinion, what is, this is Nitin. Uh, yes, to have uh, you know outside EA consultants, which can give you more point of view coming from outside organization and consulting firms, or is it always recommended to have a certain level of EA organizations, you know, from your own enterprise and and give them a ladder up, which is a better route and you know what has succeeded in past based on the experiences. I'll let some of you chime in with that. Some of you are consultants and many of you aren't. What do you think? I think uh, I think having some, something built into the organization is, is beneficial because it's I think a lot of times people think EA is just you create this document, so you create an article, the repository, and then you're done. Right. So you need to be enforced as you know as as the organization evolves. And and with consultants, they tend to come and go. So I feel like you need to have to be something baked in. Right, and and another point of view on that, based on my discussions with our you know C level execs, is they say it's always good to have a mix of a 
thirty percent outsider view and seventy percent insider view. However, you know, whenever you kind of get into that mix, the problem statement is an outsider would never let you use your existing investments and give you a good EA framework, and he would always propose new things, new technology, new people, a new workforce, rather than you know utilizing your own existing investments and get you more ROI. So it's always get into a conflicting situation. Uh, you know, what percentage of EA and what kind of a EA and, and how they should chime in. It's not that consultants are bad. Um, consultants can be very good. Uh, but it's good to have your talent. You know, EA, it's it's a living thing. You don't just do, as someone said, you don't just create an enterprise architecture and then you're done. It is uh, a living thing in architecture unless once you create it, nothing changes. Um, and in the past, well, we will see that. Um, where did EA, where has EA, from where has EA developed? From whence it came? Where has, which side of the house, business or IT? I would say more initiation um, from business side that initiates uh, these kind of frameworks since IT, uh, you know, anyways, uh, it's just... Well, a, that's yeah. okay. That's great. Thank you. I guess IT. It is IT. EA developed on the IT side and it's only business architecture in the last um, few years that has come into the... Uh, the layers of the architecture. Um, so, and, and you know, uh, it just seems kind of ludicrous to me and to many uh, people that you wouldn't include the business side, right? I mean, what's technology supporting? It's supporting the business. And yes, the business can be technology, but you know what we're talking about, um, the, the systems that need to run the business. Uh, so bringing the business side in is, is one of the newer developments, business architecture. So EA developed on the technology side and it was in the nuts and bolts uh, technology uh, in infrastructure. Uh, it was in the nuts and bolts, and then it kind of moved up. And then the the last layer is this is business architecture. So, in many companies, EA got off to a bad start, and maybe there was a failure or two with an EA endeavor, uh, and. Uh, just as, you know, uh, I'll just bring up ERP systems, just as when ERP systems uh, came into vogue, uh, you know, there were massive failures until we figured out how to do it. And now as, as EA is maturing as a, as a discipline, we are moving out of IT and moving at a higher level that encompasses not just IT, but encompasses the businesses. So we'll see that as well. So I want to jump quickly because we've been doing this an hour and I just want to get to the discussion theme. So what I do is I read through the discussions and I pull out uh, some quotes from people and hopefully it leads to some discussion. So here is a common theme uh, around misconception of EA. And this is, you know, I see this every semester, misconceptions. And here Chris Leak writes, many across IT are inclined to think of them as high-powered server guys, more so than big picture IT systems planners. What else they do is a bit of a mystery to me, and I endeavor to learn more about them. Uh, 
Chris, a different Chris says, I found that EAs became stuck in IT related projects. And now you might understand why, uh, rather than empowering the business goals of the organization with IT, it would, I would definitely agree that if I do reach out to an EA, it's generally for more specific technical support. And project, I have seen the term often confused with solution architecture. Uh, in most cases, we see design projects initiated at some of our customers after a solution. So these are typical and it has to do with this misconception often has to do with historically where EA uh, came out of it, came out of IT. Um, purpose, uh, the purpose of EA. This was another, a couple of quotes here. Henry, it's the business value led approach to EA that stands out. Business value. <laughs> so a lot of some initial bad experiences in companies where we spent all this money documenting um, documenting the shit out of this you know you'll hear you'll hear this we documented everything and nobody uses it and now management's mad because they spent all this money right and there wasn't they didn't find the business value so the alignment of business and it being driven by business goals and objectives is very important and here, both these guys, Henry and Scott, both work at salesforce.com, I believe. And as an EA at Salesforce, my role is to help bridge the gap between these divided groups within my customers and architect out a holistic solution. We are peers in the same group. Nice. Okay. The value of EA. Justifying an investment that didn't have a short-term ROI is difficult. Right. A lot of EA projects like CRM and ERP systems were these huge endeavors and it was hard to get to, for, for the business side to see the value. And so we're learning and now we even have things called agile enterprise architects or scaled enterprise architecture, which fits in with an agile um, approach to development. So some mantras. We align our EA practice and methodologies with the mantra, think big, start small, move fast. That was Henry. And Prem, Prem Kumar, think big, act small, Fail fast, learn rapidly. You learn rapidly because you fail fast. If you if it's gonna if it's not gonna work, let's find out fast. And so now we are moving away from these um, all encompassing EA efforts to you know think big, start small, move fast, fail fast, learn rapidly. And I'm working on a project on, um, with a company on that is heavy. It's a very traditional company. It's a railroad. How uh, you know that's very traditional. It's been around for over a hundred years. They are embracing uh, agile EA, and it's fascinating and they're doing a hell of a job so I can share some of these um, stories with you as I do these interviews with these people so benefits right there are some benefits providing a common business language a, co a communication framework a common language determining the impact for new business capabilities strengths and weaknesses blah blah right and then there are also some problems. We don't have strong stakeholder commitment external to the information technology support activities. That's because in many organizations, one reason is because in many organizations, 
where is EA, where does EA sit within IT? So one way to combat this is to move EA outside of IT into its own little place and it sits between IT and business. Right? The IT rank and file, however, feel that anything architecture related is just another hurdle to clear. Okay, great. It's governance. This governance mindset is governance. What is governance? It's the people that say no. <laughs> no. You want to do something, you go to get clearance, and no. So, okay, what do I have to do to pass? You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. That's not baked in. That's just bolted on at the end. So that's a problem. Small pocket of scissors pushing. Okay, so I think um, I think that's it. How did we do tonight? Was this worthy of your time? Yes, definitely. Great. Awesome. So I encourage you. Uh, I encourage you. I have a headset with a mic. And I can tell you, I know the people uh, that... Uh, teaching the other EA courses in EA 872, Dave Fusco teaches that, and he has some synchronous sessions. And there are synchronous sessions throughout. Uh, so, you know, spend a couple bucks, get a headset, uh, and join the conversation without having to type, and that's fine. And if you don't want to do that, you know, that's okay, but... I encourage you to get comfortable uh, with speaking at a distance like this. You probably do it all the time for work, but don't let a graduate class at Penn State scare you. So this is the way we're going to do things. This is um, a typical night. Uh, when we start doing the teams, the sessions probably will run an hour and a half. So they'll start at 7.30 and end by 9. Maybe sometimes they'll end earlier, but I can't do longer than an hour and a half. Um, so, and certainly when it's just me, a little over an hour is about all I can do. So please, people that are in week four, uh, you're the first team project. It's coming up soon. We're already finished week one so check out go to the people under the couple of tabs under modules in canvas and if you have no idea what i'm talking about contact magna and she'll walk you through um isn't that right magna definitely okay just checking to see if you're still here okay <laughs> So without further ado, y'all have a great week and I look forward to uh, reading your discussions and Magna will have those graded ASAP. So with that, I'm going to stop recording and I will say good night. Thanks for thanks, thanks for coming. Good night. Good night. Thanks for good night.